I've made the mistake sometimes of saying that sample libraries are like instruments that you have to learn. They're never as difficult as that. It's actually often about workflow that sometimes you have to shift, particularly when the technology behind the sample library shifts. So I'd love to take you through how my workflow has changed with our recent Murmurations release. This comes off promo in the next few hours. And also, uh, I don't know if you recall, there's a free gift that we've added to the whole package, which is this Cosmos thing, which we won't see in this form again. So if you're interested in Murmurations, now's the time. Also, Crow Hill is, um, we're not a salesy company, so uh, we believe in promos, people adopting new software and, and, and those kind of reductions. But um, I don't think you're gonna see it at this price anytime soon. But I'll stop shilling. Here's what I think is, is the first of those new ways of working is to cast away the, the curse of our lives, this noise. and work totally free. And if you're working to picture, working to picture and allowing this library to take you on a ride with it. Playing your composition though. So what I'm gonna do is start with my favorite new sound, which is the Saltasto that you can find. If you go into selects, you've got four just straight, normal, static string sounds, which are great for writing with. Um, a few of you have been asking, you know, I love all of these movements and stuff, but is, is there a way that you can uh, do it uh, with them just staying still? Well, there's two ways. One is just to load up the, the still ones, and the other is to load in velocity mode. And basically what will happen is they'll, they'll stay, stay still until you play them hard. But I'm just going to be uh, boring and do Saltasto there. I've got a nice mix that I'm very happy with, and I've locked that so that when I call up new instances, we get the same mix up. Okay, so I'm just going to play a theme loosely based on a theme I wrote for a film called Bank of Dave. So I'm basically going to look at the bars and beats that will count me in visually. I've just got to set a nominal tempo to 120, which I'm not going to listen to. I'm going to ignore. So I'm just going to pull up the first thing that loads with murmurations, gestures, launch pad. But I'm actually going to play it in G sharp. This is G sharp major, which is also F sharp minor. You may want to check out the user manual for a mini guide of how scales and modes work.
So obviously a lot going on there. And there's a few points at which you really hear things kind of drop out at their, in their prime. So what I tend to do is just have a little go through sorting out where the, the notes lie. You may have noticed whilst I was playing that instead of moving in kind of block chords, I'm in fact adding notes as I go. gives a greater degree of counterpoint to what's going on, but also it means that not everything is crescendoing together. So let's just have a little go through of this. I'm just going to extend that across along with that just so that we don't hear that drop out. stuff going on here so let's just try putting that over and maybe those two as well just so we're not cutting stuff off in their prime to this one. I think this is giving us a recognisable phrase too often. fun with the old sustain pedal there so I'm just going to remove that control function there and let's just see if we can take some of these across um, it's a lovely moment where it goes really silent wondering if I can do anything with that should come out earlier and do something a little bit cleverer. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this bit. Great. So let's keep the bass notes. Might just mute those for the time being. So what 
I'm going to now do is you would have noticed that I've not used my modulation or expression wheel um, at all throughout this. So I'm just going to shape the front end and then do some clever stuff in between and around the gestures, including merging it into that end part there where we just end on that flat still saltasto note. too much of a gap there. sound very good that last bit so let's just that into two so that I can control that little line at the top there and then I'm going to trick a note coming down this off at the end here but I think that's very effective. Just gonna see if I can add just a little bit of a, a movement there. Again with a sultastery sound there's this lovely sound called chasing angels so maybe just something up here split that into two because uh, I don't want that note all the way through so I'm just going to fade that up and I'm going to put a massive 
delay on this one because I think this note is spectacular. <laughs> Okay, so let's hear that back. I know a lot of you have asked questions like, well, how uh, can you work with this library, say, you know, if you want to do something to a click or get a musician to play along or indeed orchestrate? Well, those answers are provided on our Clips channel listed below, including, I think, an ingenious way of preparing these gestures for an orchestrator. This channel is the heartbeat of this new small enterprise. So all I ask of you, um, if you can, is to subscribe, like, and I'd advise dinging the bell so you can keep up with what's going on here. So many exciting things in the pipeline. I really appreciate you watching till the end and really appreciate the support all of you have brought, um, murmurations and have enjoyed the vaults that we've been putting out. We thank you wholeheartedly. I'll see you next time.